Welcome to the speed readings. We already discussed the first two components of the exposure triangle, shutter speed and aperture. I recommend that you watch my videos of those two things. I'm gonna leave links to them down in the description below. But today we talk about the third component, which is ISO. What the hell is ISO? Well, in technical terms, ISO stands for International Organization of Standardization. And these last two need to be flipped the other way around for the acronym to make sense. So these guys make up standards for a lot of things, from televisions to elevators to children's car seats. But today we focus on cameras because I don't think you're gonna be interested in car seats. Earlier in the series we explained how cameras create images based on light that is reflected off of subject and that light is being absorbed by the camera's sensor. And that gives us the image that we want. Well, our friends in the standardization organization decided decided to give the sensor, the sensitivity of the sensor in fact, a standardized unit of measurement. And guess what they named it after? Yes, they named it after themselves. <laughs> so how does that benefit you when you take photos? Well, the sensitivity of your sensor can affect the brightness of your image. If your camera sensor is sensitive to light, it means that you need to feed your camera less light in order to come up with a visible image. This approach is good for a dark setting, like shooting indoors or at night. But the converse is true, because if the sensor is less sensitive to light, it means that you have to feed your camera more light in order to come up with a visible image. And that usually happens in a setting such as outdoors, because everything is bright and you basically have endless supply of daylight. Oh, but Ahmed, how do I control this on my camera? Don't you have any patience? It's not even three minutes into the video. I need that watch time to grow this channel, goddammit! Okay, fine. Your camera allows you to control the sensitivity of your sensor by choosing a set value for your ISO. You start off with the lowest sensitivity, ISO 100, and the higher you go, the more sensitive your sensor becomes. You can use this to your advantage in a low light setting. Let's say you're an owl watching this video and you want to take photos at night. <laughs> I ran out of analogies. <laughs> Whatever, let's say you're an owl and you can only take photos at night. Obviously at night you don't have enough light going into your camera. In such a scenario you bump up the ISO to a certain level to make your sensor more sensitive to light. Now your subject is going to be visible in your image. But of course, as all things in life, nothing comes without a trade-off. And that trade-off is grain or noise in your image. Which is this unpleasant mess. <coughs> Nobody wants to see that. This is why we use ISO as our last resort. Because we want a clear sharp image with minimal noise. And this is why we recommend setting the ISO to as low as possible. Some cameras however have less grain or noise produced with high ISO than their competitors. And that goes back to the quality of material that they use to make that sensor. So how do you know at which ISO your camera creates noise? Well, this is where you have to play around and experiment with your camera to see at which level of ISO does your camera start creating grain. So to sum it up, low ISO, clear but dark, high ISO, bright but noise. I know, this could have been a two second video. No! I need that watch time! Subscribe and like now! <laughs> Check out the shutter speed and aperture episodes, I left the description, the links, things. It explains shutter speed and aperture so you can master the exposure triangle and give me some of that sweet, sweet watch time. That is always appreciated. Thanks for watching.